morning. Hey, Joe. Good morning, Bill. How's it going? Good. Good morning. Excuse Can't me, Chief. Good please. morning, Charlie. Photographers from the Times will take pictures today. If our cafeteria area is clean, our beautiful students will look even more so. Hi, Pete. Good morning, buddy. Can someone fix the lock on my homeroom? I can hardly open the door. Did you try? I tried. Oh, there'll be no fire drill today. The alarm goes off, ignore it. Unless it's a real fire, of course. <laughs> I have to talk to you later. What room are you going to be in first period? 222, Mr. Kaufman. The band played outside my 11 o'clock window again yesterday. Do I have to keep buying my own chalk? They're ignoring my requisition slips. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Dixon. Did your uh, father drive you to work? Uh-huh. I'll drive you home. Lovely. Have a delightful day, Miss McIntyre. You're going to be fine. Wait a minute, Miss McIntyre, everybody. Now, don't forget the 11 a PTA meeting tonight, 8 o'clock in Anderson Hall. Be cake and cookies. Good morning, Miss McIntyre. Hey, Richie. What are you doing that for? Look, I don't want an argument. Are you here or not, Abram? Well, yeah, I'm here. What do you think I am? He's here, man. Honest. Allen. Jason Allen. Get yourself together, baby. Ain't it enough you dress like the teacher? Jason Allen, here or not? Oh, oh yes. Jason's here. <laughs> Anderson. No. Here? <coughs> College. I seem to be here. Marianne Fuller. Here. Oh, Mr. Dixon. Here? <laughs> Everybody's here today. Thank you, Richie. Oh, don't mention it. <laughs> hey, I just got a great idea. Why don't I teach history? Uh, yeah. Civil War period, 1861 to 1865. Four years. Some historians have spent a lifetime studying those four years. We have a week. How many of you read last night's assignment? The truth? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. See you in a minute. Yes, sir. Al, write the names of these books on the blackboard. Pete Dixon, Alice Johnson. Hi, it's a pleasure. Miss Johnson is here to dry the area behind her ears. She's going to spend the rest of this semester with you, student teaching. And if she's smart, she'll go back to college and change her major. Oh, I really care about teaching. I hope it's a meaningful semester for both of us. <laughs> Just what you always wanted, right? Meaningful semester? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kaufman. Keep in touch. Bye, Mr. Kaufman. <laughs> he doesn't like me. But I'm sort of used to it. See, I have this way of getting on people's nerves. But I'm working on it. <laughs> That's why I think it's very important that you and I establish good human relations. Right. I know I have a lot of middle-class hang-ups. I went to a segregated school. Oh, that's okay. So did I. <laughs> this is Miss Johnson. She's a student teacher. You can have that seat back there, Miss Johnson. Thanks. Here are the titles of three fine books on the Civil War. You'll find them in the school library. The one I like best is Carl Sandburg's The War Years. Okay, now, causes of the Civil War. What were they? Marianne. The prime cause of the Civil War was the Southern states' insistence upon holding slaves. Wait a minute. Straight from the book? Well, yes, sir. Can we go completely by one book? Books disagree. This book is now being revised. This world is being revised, so you'd better start doing some thinking now, some questioning. But, Mr. Dixon, that is the answer. One answer. 
A simple answer. Was it all that simple? According to Marianne, it was a question of morality. The North felt sorry for the slaves. Is that it? Bernie. No. The North was willing to let the South keep slavery. They just didn't want it to spread. No, the abolitionists were in the North, and they thought it was immoral. Then how come the Negro in the North couldn't vote? Is that right, Mr. Dixon? Look it up. Richie. Well, the North had to pay their workers, but the South had slaves. OK, now we're talking morality, politics, economics. Keep it up. Nicole. Can I come half an hour late on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it after class. Helen. The North and the South were both interested in the new territories. Could you say that a little louder? Both sides were after the new land in the West. Richie? Well, the big thing was the South wanted to pull out of the Union, but the North wanted to hold it together. No, Richie, I didn't call on you for an answer. Miss McIntyre wants to see it. Richie, you've been doing so great lately. The top 10% of your class. I sent a letter home to your folks to let them know how happy we were about it. And it came back. No such address. Oh, yeah, sure. I live at 8217, not 8211. Tell me the truth, Richie. You do live in the school district, don't you? And that boy, Richie, so eager, like so many of you students are that way. I feel I learned more this morning than at three years of college. It's not like you were teaching them. It's like you were just talking to them. Oh, excuse me, I just want to get to the coffee, have a meaning for lunch. <laughs> I think it's so significant that you're colored. I meant that as a compliment. Did I use the wrong term? Well, I better ask you straight out. Do you prefer colored, or negro, or black? I've always preferred Pete. Hey, that was wonderful. I mean, you really put me down, and I deserved it. But you see, I don't do these things intentionally. I'm a product of my environment. <laughs> and I bet. Thanks for lunch. OK. May we join you, Ben? Yes, of course. Tim Stewart? Alice Johnson. Hi. Hi. Student teaching. Uh huh? You're lucky you didn't get my class. I had to send eight kids to the VP's office this morning. VP? Vice principal. Who can control them? As far as they're concerned, rules are made to be broken. And so are teachers. <laughs> Maybe there are just too many rules. A teacher can't be expected to cope with puberty. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Where are we going? Oh, Alice, go ahead and finish your lunch. Well, is it what I said before? No, because you know I didn't. No, no, I'll see you in class. I was getting waterlogged waiting here. What's happening? Well, it's Richie. Well, I think he may have lied about living in the school district. Hold off from telling Kaufman. Pete, I can't do that. Let me find Richie and talk to him. Hey, have you seen Richie Lane? No. Have you seen Richie Lane? It was over the park a while ago. Richie? Not easy to find. I guess you saw Miss McIntyre. That's right. Can I ask you something? Where did you go to high school? Tyler. And I know what you're going to tell me. You can do it, so can I. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm here to listen, but I want you to be straight with me. Well, I tried to make it there. I tried to get something out of that school. It didn't sound. My friends start coming down on me like I was something weird. And I just couldn't take all that dumping. Plus all that other stuff. Half-day sessions, cops in the hall, fights every time you look up. OK. You went there and you got over. But I just can't book all those odds. You shouldn't have to. So you just marked down a phony address and came here? 
Oh, but I've been doing real good. Right? Right. Tell me the truth, Mr. Dixon. Are you bringing the word? Am I gonna get bounced back there to Tyler? I don't know, Reggie. Look, if you just pass him, he won't do it again. You'll have to understand. She was 12 days premature. Sidney Poitier is my favorite actor. He's very good. Very good. He's terrific. Say, uh, you don't teach English, do you? No. American history. Hmm. Because last night I was up reading a terrific book by James Baldwin. Brilliant writer. Any favorite singers? Sammy Davis, Jr. He's very good. What about Frank Sinatra? Oh, he's okay. With no elephant stare, right? Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, I have this fascination for statistics. This is my 3,000th PTA meeting, and I didn't like the first one. <laughs> Could I speak to you a minute, Miss McIntyre? What are you doing? You haven't told Kaufman about Richie yet, have you? No, not yet. Good. Well, why good? Because you're not going to tell him. Pete, don't make up my mind for me. Besides, what are people going to think if they see us off with each other like this? Right now, nothing. In another minute, they're going to think we're having one whale of a fight. Fight by yourself. Pete, don't get me mad. If you don't come with me right now, I'm going to kiss you in front of the entire 11A PTA. <laughs> we'll talk in the morning. You don't want him sent back to Tyler, and neither do I. But what about those 2,000 kids who are stuck there right now? What about them? Richie Lane, we can do something about. What am I doing as the heavy? I'm just doing what I have to do. Sure. Liz McIntyre, all upper middle class. Touch all the bases, follow all the rules. Yes, sir, Mr. Kaufman, we gonna kick Richie out. You don't really believe that, do you? No, honey, I don't. It's just the most powerful argument I know. I figured it was worth a try. Pete, I can't be you. I've got to be me. Maybe that means touching the bases and following all the rules. But that's the way I am. I love the way you are. But I can't hold off telling Kaufman any longer. Understand? No, baby, I don't. Because there's a kid on the line here. You're supposed to be covering the class. What are you doing out here? I'm self-evaluating. Look, for example, on a scale of one to ten, ten being the greatest teacher in the whole world, and a one being a, get him out of here, well, you're an eight, and I'm a two. Twos just don't fill in for eights. <laughs> <laughs> Richie, Richie, I want to see you after class. Okay, Civil War generals. Let's get to it. Mm. 
Do you have a Richard Lane? Come with me, please. Better bring your books. Let's go. Okay, if anyone has anything to say, say it. L. Why'd they pull Richie? Richie doesn't live in this district. We found out, so he has to go back to his old school. That's it. Helen. Yesterday you were saying how things are never that simple. I can't hear you, Helen. Yesterday you were saying how things are never that simple. Today you said that they pulled Richie out because he doesn't live in the district. Isn't that a simple answer? She don't talk loud, but she sure talks good. When you have 3,000 kids in a school, it is simple. It starts getting complicated when you know Richie Lane. Miss Johnson, take over the class. He can't do nothing. Richie had them big ideas, so they just naturally got to come down on him. I've just been in class a day, but I feel like I know many of you already. Now you're going to get a chance to know me. Well, whoopee. <laughs> uh, Civil War generals. Now, I don't know why I'm so interested in that, but... You know how some things strike your interest, and before you know it, you're interested. <laughs> anyway, um, Civil War generals were the sort of men... Who, uh, Jason, why are you still standing? Because I'm tired of sitting. I see. Jason, are you trying to frighten me? Didn't know you were so scared. Well, I am. This is the first time I've ever taught a class. And I'm darn scared. You're making things a lot harder for me. What's the point? Come on, sit down. That is not a problem. Let me put it this way. That is not our problem. You have to know Richie. I have to know all these kids, 3,000 of them. See that? Now you made me hollow. <laughs> all right. Time for words of wisdom. Pete, I had to accept a long time ago that I'm a principal, not a social worker. Just check his record. Do you know what his IQ is? And you're a teacher, not a social worker. If you send him back... You're not a social worker, Pete! Liz, tell him he's not a social worker. Right. I'm a teacher. I'm here to teach. But there's a regulation that says I can't teach this kid. That he's got to go to Tyler. And that's wrong. Because I know Tyler. I'm from Tyler. And what they're doing there isn't teaching. It's controlling. Here's our regulations. And I say they stink, Mr. Kaufman. Unless somewhere in all of these pages, there's one rule that says I can teach this kid. If he stayed here, he could end up with a scholarship. If you send him back... Oh, great. You too. Well, of course, me too. Well... You two are going to leave this office thinking that I'm a louse, because that's what I have to be right now. It's part of my civil service examination. It said, can you be a louse? I answered yes, so they made me a principal. <laughs> this must have happened before. Don't tell me there's never been a kid in this school from out of the district. Yes, but there were valid reasons. What were they? Like someone wanting to take a course here that he couldn't get at his own school. 
Well, that doesn't apply. Everything on this boy's schedule he could get at Tyler High. Look for yourself. What would you say if I told you that Richie mentioned to me the other day he wanted to change his program? I would say he had incredible timing. <laughs> and suppose this new subject isn't taught at Tyler, but we teach it here. What then? Okay, I get it. I'm not sure I should, but I do. Bonnie, call downtown. Find out what courses we offer that they don't give at Tyler High. Blessings on you, Seymour Kaufman. <laughs> oh, I've had that kid waiting in the detention room till I could notify his parents. You better get him in here. You just flunked the mouse test. So? I make a lousy louse. <laughs> Richie, come with me. Come on. Mm-hmm. I understand that. All you have to do is take one of these subjects. All right. Thank you very much. Well, there are two subjects. What are they? Basic calculus. I'll take it. Oh, you can't. Well, you haven't had trigonometry yet. What's the other one? What's wrong? This other course. I had kind of a tough time with it myself, Richard. I'm not sure you'd take to it. Oh, sure I would. What's the subject? Hebrew. <laughs> it's a... It, it's a very interesting subject, Richie. Yeah. Sure, Mr. Dixon. I've always wanted to learn Hebrew. Of course you have. Well, anyhow, that's it. The only two courses we offer that they don't. It was bound to be offbeat. Can I go to my next class now? You better. Richard. Good luck. Shalom, Mr. Kaufman. <laughs> I need help. I mean it. I need help. Oh. Oh, hi. Hey, <laughs> I didn't know you two were socially involved. Uh, Liz and I don't want a lot of gossip going on about us. I won't tell. <laughs> I would have guessed, though. You said you needed help. Oh, it's nothing. Just that I failed as a teacher today, but that's my problem. You go on ahead. I'll see you around. Go on. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Hmm? I'll give you a lift and we can talk about what's bothering you. You sure? I'm sure. Hey, this is swell. You know, Alice, you can't expect to be a great teacher in one day. Oh, I don't. I'm going to give it a week. <laughs> Good idea. I figure, you know, with all the studying that I've been doing in class, have you ever seen him teach a class? It's so fantastic. The kids are just so eager and have such attention, you can't believe if I'm an actor. 